Hello. Welcome to this presentation about enabling OCI utilities in Oracle Linux on an Oracle Cloud Infrastructure instance. These utilities support interactions between the instance operating system and the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. These utilities are installed by default on the standard Oracle Cloud Infrastructure images for Oracle Linux 7 and 8. Much of the OCI utilities functionality requires that you have the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Python SDK and OCI utilities packages installed and configured. These packages come pre-installed for the instance, but if for some reason we need to install them, on an Oracle Linux 7 system we install them with the yum command, and on Oracle Linux 8 we use the dnf command. Looking at our terminal, I have set up the packages so we can see some of the installation for reference. Running the command yum info python 36-oci-sdk, we see the python sdk package is installed. Remember, if you are installing on an Oracle Linux 8 instance, you use the command dnf install python 36-oci-sdk. OCI Utilities also uses a daemon service called ocid.service to discover and interact with the Oracle Cloud infrastructure and its resources. Before using OCI Utilities, always check to see if the ocid daemon is started. To check the service, we run the command systemctl status ocid.service and we see the service is currently loaded but inactive and not running. To start it, we run the command systemctl start ocid.service. Running the command systemctl status ocid.service, we see the daemon is now running. To ensure the service starts on reboot, we run the command systemctl enable ocid.service. With packages installed and the ocid daemon running, we can now interact with our Oracle Cloud infrastructure from our instance command line. We can interrogate compartment information, discover, attach and detach resources like iSCSI block volume devices, secondary VNICs and their IP addresses, and other provisioned information. From our instance command line, these command line utilities can create and destroy devices using resources from our cloud infrastructure compartment. To request these resources requires additional permissions for our instance and web console user. There are a few ways this can be done, but let's look at one which is easy to set up. The Python OCI CLI package has a script to help configure and create API private and public keys, which allow the SDK CLI calls to the API to be automatically authenticated. These keys are tied to the user and tenancy OCIDs and region, so we will need this information when we go through the configuration steps. We have both our instance terminal and web console windows open, as we will be copying information between them. On our terminal, we run the command OCI setup config to begin the configuration of the API keys. We accept the default location and file name of slash root slash dot OCI slash config for the location and configuration file resulting from these script steps. Next, we are asked to provide the user OCID. To get this, we go to our web console. From the dashboard screen, we click on the user icon and then user settings. Beside the OCID entry for the user, we click copy to copy the full OCID value to the clipboard. Returning to our terminal, we paste in the value and press enter. Next, we are asked for our tenancy OCID. Returning to our console, again from the dashboard, we click on the user icon and then the tenancy name. On the tenancy details page, we select copy beside the OCID value to copy it to our clipboard. Back on our terminal, we paste in the tenancy OCID value and press enter. We enter in our region name. For this demonstration, it will be us-ashburn-1. If we have an existing key pair we want to use, we can select n and we'll be prompted to supply the path to them. But as we want a new key pair created, we select y. He will accept the default slash root slash OCI directory for our keys. And for the name of the keys, I will use OCI underscore API underscore key underscore new. We don't need a passphrase here, so I will leave this blank. That's it. We now have a public and private key pair created and a config file. To finish the setup, we need to create an API key entry for the user profile in the web console and upload the new public key. From the dashboard, select the user icon and user settings. On the user information page, scroll down to resources and select API keys. You see my user already has two other API keys set, so to create our new one, select add API key. 
In the dialog, I'm going to paste in the contents of my new public key. So let's leave that open and return to the terminal. Running the command ls slash root slash dot oci, we see the two key files in the config file. Entering the command cat slash root slash dot oci slash oci underscore api underscore key underscore new underscore public dot pem, we see the contents of the key. We highlight and copy the key information to the clipboard. Returning to the web console and the open dialog, I select paste public key and paste the key information into the entry box and click add. If you did not use the OCI setup config script to create the config file, you would need to manually create it. Here we see after adding the key information, we are given the config file info we would use to create that config file. Remember to correctly modify the path to the key file section. We can now close the dialog. And that's the API permissions set up to allow our instance to use API calls to create devices from cloud resources. With the installation of the required packages and the API keys set up, we are now ready to use the OCI utilities. The OCI utilities package supports an increasing list of useful utilities. The OCI-iSCSI-config command allows for the management of iSCSI block volume devices. With it, you can create devices using Oracle Cloud Infrastructure resources attach and detach these devices to and from your instance, and destroy unattached devices in the cloud, all from the instance command line. The OCI-network-config command shows virtual network interface cards, or VNICs, secondary VNICs, and IP configuration provisioned for instances in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. It configures and deletes IP configurations for VNICs on instances, and syncs the configuration on the instance with the provisioning for it in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. The OCI-growFS command expands a root file system on an instance to its configured size in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. It allows the root file system to utilize the full allocated boot volume size. The OCI-metadata command is used to view or update the Oracle Cloud infrastructure instance metadata. The OCI-public-IP command displays the public IP address of an instance. This command also runs on any Linux instance that can connect to the internet. This command can use the STUN protocol and you can specify a particular STUN server to look up the IP addresses. Some of these commands are covered in detail in other videos, so remember to look for the other OCI Utilities videos also. Oracle provides an extensive number of resources which you can use to learn more about this subject than others. Use the links here to find more content about this video as well as Oracle Linux and using Linux and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.